Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the in-game score and see what's going on behind the scenes with that. It's one of those things I look at all the time when I'm playing and I have lots of little questions about it, but I've never had a chance in-game to really play around with it. Now, score reading isn't a replacement for scouting, but I think there's some potential information you can get about what your opponent is doing from it, as well as some limitations and misleading things to watch out for. Let's check it out. First of all, make sure you have the score displaying properly. You can also see your economic and military breakdown if you have those overlays on, but those are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to be talking about those. If you have the scores displaying, the left number represents your personal score, and the right number is your team averaged together, including people that have resigned. So that's superficially what the score area tells you about, but now let's look specifically at the personal score in more depth and see how that's calculated. It's broken up into four categories and we've all seen them at the end of the match. The first is the military score, which comes from 20% of the resource cost of all enemy units and buildings that you've destroyed or converted. A common theme here is that the score doesn't differentiate between the different resources, so people making masses of non-gold units might be making a cost-effective exchange when we look at gold, which is obviously very important to conserve in a 1 vs 1 game, but the score can't tell the difference, making it potentially misleading. As well, buildings tend to be very expensive in wood, and just think about the amount of wood adding up in even raising just houses and farms. In a Black Forest game, the highest score player could easily be the one who makes a point of raising all the buildings left behind after a player resigns. Another thing to point out is it values killing a spearman higher than killing a villager, because it's technically 60 resources versus 50. The score doesn't care about stats or upgrades on units or whether or not it's helpful in multiple ways like a villager is. That's part of the reason I think a lot of people come to dismiss a slight score lead in the mid game, or at least why you can't necessarily tell who's winning based solely on score. It's interesting to me that conversions also count towards this. There's a bit of an exploit related to this where the conversion points add regardless of how many times you convert the same unit. So you essentially generate points out of nothing by converting a unit back and forth. The second category of score is economy, which comes from 10% of your stockpile resources from all sources that you currently have or have paid in tribute, including trade and relics, plus 20% of what you paid for all of your surviving units and standing buildings besides castles and wonders. I find it interesting that spent resources are worth twice as much as unspent ones. So someone who tends to stockpile a lot of resources is going to have a lower score than someone else with the same income but who keeps their resources lower by spending them as soon as they come in. This is also why your score drops so much if your town gets destroyed, since a lot of your score can be tied up in the resource cost of all the buildings that you've made. The score is also going to go down as your units die, since for you it's only counting your surviving units, and as you lose those units that score is going straight to your opponent's military score. That's why in those really long games military score tends to be by far the largest. The economy score is basically a snapshot of what you have now, while the military score is more like the cumulative economy points you've taken from your opponents. I was a little curious about the tribute points and if they stack like they did with the back and forth conversions, but it looks like it's a little more conservative. First of all, as we expect, you don't go up in score by tributing, since those resources counted 10% toward your score before, and tributes also count 10%. So by sending tribute, you personally don't see a change in your score, but your ally score improves because of the new extra resources. If they send those resources back, they don't get tribute points until they've sent as much as they've received. So their score goes down again by sending those resources back to you and everything resets, meaning it doesn't stack like conversions. Basically, the person receiving the greatest net resource amount sent to them gets a score boost and there's no points for being generous. The third category is technology points. This one comes from 20% of the resources spent on technologies, plus 10 points for every 1% of the map you've explored. 
Maybe surprisingly, this one has the most significant effect on your early score. Map scouting is pretty important, but I think it might be a little overvalued in this calculation. Black Forest maps are often set to explored, so instead let's consider a 1 vs 1 Arabia match. A tiny map has 14,400 tiles in total, so 1% of that would be 144 tiles, which just for reference is the size of the yellow area here. According to the in-game score, that has the same value as 100 unspent resources or 50 spent ones. Giant maps have over 57,000 tiles, so you'll need to explore four times as much to get that same score, so what I'm saying here applies mostly to the smallest maps. You can even see your score is larger at the start of a game on a smaller map than on a bigger one because you've explored proportionally more of the map with your town center's line of sight. So expect your scores to be significantly lower in the early game on larger maps. Now to get a sense of how much weight scouting has on your score in the early game, consider that sheep walk 0.7 tiles per second and have a line of sight radius of 2. That means they're seeing almost exactly 1% of a tiny map for every 36 seconds they walk. To try to ballpark that in a real game, I had a map where I had some favorable starting sheep locations, and after a practice round, I did the exact same build three times with sending the sheep directly to the town center and not exploring with them at all. I kept the scout exploring, and this gave me a sense of the baseline amount of points if you did no scouting with your sheep. There's surprisingly consistent scores at the 5 minute mark, averaging 536 points, and then I did that same build three more times except exploring with those sheep, setting them back as needed for the shepherds, and at the end of those three trials at the same 5 minute mark, I averaged 675 points, a 26% higher score. Considering I started at 191 points, that means 40% of my points accumulated in those 5 minutes were from sheep scouting alone and I had a lot of moments where sheep were standing around and double scouting areas that I'd already done. I found it kind of difficult to keep track of them all in real time, but I have no doubt that score could be at least 50 points higher for someone practicing this a lot. Obviously, you won't find all your sheep this quickly on a consistent basis, but the point is, if your opponent jumps out to an early 50 or 100 point score lead, it's more easily explained that they probably found their sheep earlier and did more scouting than it is that they have a building or resource advantage on you, which would be pretty subtle in the early game and difficult to pick up on from the scores at that point. That being said, they may also have a great Dark Age bonus compared to you or be fishing, so scouting isn't the only explanation for a score lead, but it's certainly a major factor. The other important thing to point out in the Dark Age score is you don't get any points for something that you're researching before it's done, but you have spent the resources, so those don't count toward your score anymore. The best example is the first major technology purchase you'll make, which is the feudal upgrade. At 500 food, your score drops 50 points when you start researching it because your stockpile has lost 500 resources, which counted 10% towards your economy score. Once you reach feudal age though, 20% of those resources go towards the new technology score, which suddenly adds 100 points, giving you 50 more overall. In a real game, you might notice that as your opponent's score being very similar or slightly higher than yours and then suddenly dropping by 50 points. If you notice that and you've been continually making villagers, you can check your current population and it'll give you a sense of roughly how many villagers your opponent went up on. Again, map exploration adds a lot of noise to that score though, so you don't necessarily know your opponent's strategy just by looking at it, and it's easy to miss that drop in score. You should still be scouting to try to figure out what your opponents are doing, and obviously building choices are a much better indicator of strategy, but if you've lost your scout or can't find their town, that might be useful information for you. The fourth category for score is society, which is just 20% of the resources you've spent towards castles and wonders. Personally, I'd probably have put villager score in here and maybe contributed 40% of their resource value to the score, since I think they're more important than other units of a similar cost, but suffice to say, there's not much happening here. Now what I thought might be fun to develop your intuition is to see what a thousand points in each category looks like. According to the military score, killing all of the units in one of these groups gets you 1,000 points because that's 20% of their resource value. The player with any of these armies also loses that many points if they're destroyed. You'd have to create groups from scratch this large to gain 1,000 economy points though. So why the difference? Well, the resources you spent on them originally counted 10% towards your score, and the new ones count 20%. 
So to go up a thousand points, you need to spend 10,000 resources. This many buildings are also worth a thousand points if you raise them, and similar to the rationale for units, you'd have to build twice that many in order to gain a thousand points by building them. The moral here seems to be that it's easier to get more points by attacking other players and destroying what they've built rather than building it yourself. As well, researching all of these texts is worth 1,000 points, and just for reference, researching all of the Saracens' texts gives them about 9,000 technology points. As mentioned before, completely exploring the map is also worth 1,000 points, and building 15 castles gives you just over 1,000. So that's what 1,000 points looks like. Now there's also a couple of other symbols that can show up with the score that I think are worth mentioning. The baseball comet sort of thing refers to someone with a high ping, yellow being pretty bad and red being very bad. And if those are present, it means the game is slowing down and the biggest contributing factor to that seems to be just distance between the players geographically. That's why you'll see players specifying Australia, New Zealand, Brazil, or sometimes EU, and that's just to keep all the computers close together and the ping low. Obviously, after Brexit, one of the things that will have to be negotiated is whether players from the UK are still allowed to join those EU-only lobbies. The other symbol you'll see is a turtle, and that means the person's computer itself doesn't have the ability to process everything going on in the game, probably because of a weak graphics card or other programs running in the background. And you see that come up a lot more in 3 vs 3 and 4 vs 4 games. So hopefully that gives you a sense of all the information the score is telling you. Overall, I'd say it does a pretty good job giving you an idea of how the players and teams are doing at a glance and at the very least I hope I've conveyed the idea that it's not a perfect representation of how people are doing and predicting the outcome of the game so don't give up if your score is a little behind you're probably doing better than you think that's all for this one though thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time